Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League's Blood Bowl. It is the championship tournament. We are in the semifinals. This is round number two of the semifinals, and we have our first one up tonight, and I'm super excited for it. Tonight, it's a Dark Elf mirror match with the Masters of Mammal versus That's Kinda Catchy, El Numerino versus Sweet Bunny. My goodness, this is, these are two champions. Here in the semifinals, we have the Dungeon Master champ, Dungeon Master. <laughs> That's a game I'd like to play again. The Dungeon Ball champion in El Numerino and the Masters of Mammal with the Chaos Cup champions. That's kind of catchy. And what a matchup it's going to be tonight. I'm very, very excited to talk about this. Let's take a look at the bracket first though. As you can see, this is the first match of the semifinals. The win this is a single elimination bracket. The winner advances to the finals. The loser will drop down to the consolation match for third place. The winner tonight will be playing the winner of the second semifinals. Doug the Minotaur's Dinabelle Darlings, a Dwarven team up against Clypheus's Knights of Nuffle, a Brett team advanced his way into the semifinals after uh, winning in the lower bracket against a halfling team, believe it or not, coached by Artificial Buddy. The losers, of course, will drop down to the consolation match. And there you can see the fifth team that's made it to the Blood Bowl this season, Mootland Scout Troop number 079, losing to the Knights of Nuffle. Uh, in a very fun match, I, again, man, Halfling's making it. <laughs> Boy, that's a that's a testament to Artificial Bunny's uh, uh, skills as a player, and uh, lots of fun to watch that team. But tonight, tonight it's Dark Elves versus Dark Elves, the home team this evening, the Masters of Mammal, coached by El Nuberino, coming in at an astounding 2,030 TV. That is 2 million... 300,000 gold that, that this team is worth. I think this might be the most uh, the most valuable team that maybe has ever been in the league. I'm not sure, but it seems like it could be. He's got a 13 player roster coming in this evening. He has his two witch elves in Tila and the Sorceress. He has his four blitzers. He has an assassin on the roster. Everybody else is a lineman. Three team rerolls, one apothecary, 11 fan factor, just 40K in the treasury tonight. He's gonna be up against, that's kind of catchy, coached by Sweet Bunny. We haven't seen this team since the Chaos Cup. Sweet Bunny won the Chaos Cup with this team and then elected to play with a, a, a different team for the rest of the season. <laughs> Clavius, thank you so much for the sub. It does feel that way. Strange, huh? <laughs> thank you very, very much. It's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, so he played this team in the Chaos Cup, decided to play a different team for the rest of the season, but now he's back with this team. They are at a TV of just 1,000. And <laughs> as you can see, only seven players on the roster this evening. He just has one Witch Elf. He only has the three Blitzers. He has three team rerolls, one Oppo, and seven Fan Factor. That gives the Fan Factor advantage to El Nuberino. It's a plus four in Fan Factor. We'll see if that will translate into a fame advantage in the game. That's all that matters. 90k in the treasury. Let's talk about this. 1,030k going to Sweet Bunny this evening. And honestly, I think this game comes down to exactly that. We see the Masters of Mammal with a, a very strongly kitted out team, lots of skills, lots of great combinations on these players. Very, very scary team. He's got a, a couple of players with increased stats. He's gonna be up against a team that's broken. They're down to seven players. Now it's an elven team. Elves really don't mind having uh, uh, having journeymen on their roster, not too much. B.1234 says, are we playing Dungeons and Dragons? Kinda. <laughs> really doesn't like having, or really doesn't mind having uh, journeymen on their roster, right? These elves just have such fantastic stat lines. AG4 will get you far. AV8, not bad for resiliency as well, but when most of your linemen are gonna say, be dodging and repositioning, or maybe taking two die blocks, you don't really care about the linemen. The problem is he's picking up four. Ah, it's teetering on a lot, in my opinion. That's four players is, is a significant number of players to be journeymen. Journeymen, of course, 
are going to have the loner skill, which means you don't want to spend a reroll on them. But to make up for that, he's getting a ton of petty cash. Let's talk about uh, El Nuberino's roster first. You can see he has the two Witch Elves. One's level four in Tila. He has level three in the Sorceress. Uh, Tila is a blodger with sidestep and tackle. He has the Sorceress with Juggernaut and Wrestle. He has He-Man, the level four Blitzer. He has tackle and Dauntless. Duncan has sure hands and leap. He has Arkfill, the level four lineman's picked up an extra point of AV or AG, excuse me. He has sure hands. I'm sorry, uh, Duncan has strip ball. Arkfill has sure hands. Whiplash, the number three lineman, has picked up an extra point of strength. He has block as well. The assassin, of course, level one assassin, but they're assassins. They have stab and shadowing. He has Skeletor, who has somehow stayed alive all season long. <laughs> <laughs> Skeletor is a blodger as well with sidestep. He has lots of dodge, lots of block. Very, very, very scary pieces. He in with that mighty blow. He's got uh, he's got all the team rerolls he meet needs. Maybe he has a very solid roster and he can put in a lot of work with this. But the problem is he's giving up so much money to to Sweet Bunny this evening. Sweet Bunny can, can do a lot of work with that. So we, we've we seen the Masters of Mammal roster. They have very solid players, lots of really, really, really strong players. He's got the two Witch Elves that he wants, the four Blitzers that he wants. Sweet Bunny coming in with just seven players, lots of which are, are level one. He has Bazinga and two Lyman who are each, all rookies. He'll get the he'll get the journeyman, of course, but with with over a grand <laughs> in TV, right? Uh, that's a lot of petty cash to spend. Uh, over over a million gold in petty cash. He'll pick up a, a wizard, absolutely. Uh, I suspect he'll pick up two star players, although which star players, I'm not really sure. He's He's got his pick. I don't really like most of them, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what Sweet Bunny decides. I also think he might dip in and maybe get a chef in this game. It's going to cost him 300k, but you got a lot of money to burn. If he gets a chef and that chef can cook his heart out and take away the rerolls from the Masters of Mammal, then they're going to have their work cut out for them. And Sweet Bunny can leverage that to really put the hurt on and try to score and uh, on offense and, and really uh, prevent those scores when he's on defense as well because the odds significantly change when you don't have the rerolls available to you. So that's an option as well. Again, 300K is usually not worth it, but when you've got a ton of money, maybe it's worth it tonight. Who's to say? He has lots of options with the petty cash. Um, he could pick up, he could pick up babes. He could pick up bribes. We'll see what he decides to do tonight. I, I would love to see a chef. <laughs> I would love to see a chef uh, before we head over to Cabal TV. Why don't we take a look at the, at the Stadium for the Masters of Mammal. All right, so no stadium effects in play this evening. <laughs> Clive says humorous, I think would be a good choice. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Let's head on over to Cabal TV. So those journeymen are gonna cost him 240, I think. Journeyman are cost. Oh, B.1234, thank you so much for the sub. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, so I think I think the journeyman, I, yeah, 70K. So that's going to cost him 280. 280K in petty cash, so roughly 300. So he's going to have a little, he's going to have 700 and change to spend. Um, I think that's a wizard. Uh, he could pick up two star, as we mentioned, we could pick up two star players with that. I, man, I'd love to see a chef. <laughs> I would really love to see a chef. Just go all in on Nuffle <laughs> and say, you know what? I'm picking up a chef tonight. Praise Nuffle. <laughs> Let's go. Give me six rerolls tonight, Nuffle. Let's see. Um, he, he could go with one star player and a chef, uh, but uh, 300k for a chef is expensive. He might not go with the chef at all. Uh, he might pick up maybe some bribes and, and start trying to bash uh, El Nuberino into the ground. The problem is El Nuberino's, his players are just much more resilient. They all have, or not all of them, but many, many, many of those players have blodge. He's going to need to get the pal to, to knock them down. It can be tough to try to outbash uh, El Nuberino's roster tonight. 
<laughs> Clivey says going all in and going all in on Nuffle has historically worked <laughs> well for me. And why wouldn't it, sir? Why wouldn't it? Rainy game this this evening in this semifinal. Oh boy. Looks like the Masters of Mammal are setting up on defense here. Who got the fame advantage? Masters of Mammal naturally got the plus one fame advantage. Wizard on deck, a bribe on deck. He didn't take a chef boo. <laughs> Instead, he opted for the two star players. He got Hubris, Rakarth, and he got uh, Eldril Sidewinder. Boy, he's got Hypno on this roster. Not too many times you see Hypno on, uh, on the pitch. You'll see it with a vampire team. Vampire teams. Uh, don't often get chosen. They're not that great. <laughs> but we'll see if he can make good use of Hypno here uh, in this evening's matchup. Eldr uh, Eldril has that AV of seven. We'll see if he can stay alive. Hubris Rakarth has that strength of four and mighty blow. He's also a dirty player with, with a bribe standing by. Yes, indeed, he has a wizard. He's got a wizard hidden in the sands. Just look for the guy in the in the trench coat. No wizards use umbrellas. That is a fact. Ten seconds left to set up this defense. He's screening out his opponent. Three players on the line. And now Sweet Bunny to set up here on offense. <laughs> Duck the Minotaur says, let's go Dark Elves. <laughs> Who's got their money on Dark Elves tonight? <laughs> Duck the Minotaur currently with four players on the line. Has that beefy hubris with that strength of four, that mighty blow. That dirty player, he has block as well. Two star players means he's starting off with four, four loners on the pitch. He would have started off with four loners regardless. Dark elves being elves are identified mainly by having the AG of four in this version of the rules. AG4 is super, super strong. You make a lot of agility rolls in the game, and an AG of four means that a, a flat AG roll is going to be a two plus. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's really, really powerful. Yeah, we're in the... the, the the home stretch of the season here. And so there's not just lots of tactical and strategic uh, decisions to make, but there's the layer of strategic decision making on top of that. Uh, oh, wow. The Masters of Ammo get an extra reroll. They'll gladly take it. Turn one for that's kind of catchy. But both or all coaches now in the Blood Bowl, the final four here, really have to think about what their team composition is going to be for the next round. Are they going to have a team that can actually stand up to who they might be facing in this upcoming round? Both these teams are looking at Dwarves and they're looking at Brett. And those are two pretty different teams. Two die block to get things started. Gets the knockdown here. Skeletor is going to get knocked down. We'll see if, uh, if he stays alive here. does indeed dark elves have uh, most of the players have av8 which is very very good compared to say the av7 of some other elven teams <laughs> life says dwarves and brett pretty different teams understatement of the year <laughs> dwarves the canonical uh the canonical slow bashy team uh brett more of a a, a tricky pitch control team
Gets a push on the block. That's kind of catchy. Only has one Witch Elf to work with that's going to make her a target. She is a Blodger with Sidestep. That's going to make her really tough to knock down. Blodge means block plus dodge. Block plus dodge means that only the POW is going to knock down that player. Everything else will keep her on her feet. And uh, Sidestep means that she can move herself out of the way to prevent uh, chain blocks. So she doesn't have to work. Typically, maybe if she gets that, say, first two die block, and it doesn't work out. She can dance away to safety and uh, a chain block really can't be set up on her. Two die blitz gets the pow here against Stinkor. Nobody likes Stinkor. Nobody likes Stinkor. Gets the knockdown. Needed a nine plus on a navy of eight. Didn't get it. Still has plenty of movement left with the blitzer. <clears throat> Moves the blitzer back toward the ball. 24 seconds to go here in turn number one. This rainy day means it's a minus one to everything that involves hands. Catching, intercepting, or picking up the ball is going to be a minus one. That's usually a significant impact to uh, an Elven team. And uh, really no different here, except for the fact that these uh, Dark Elf teams with their their higher resiliency here with this AV of 8 and, and starting with block skills on some of the positionals means that they tend to be a team that, that can be a little bit better at running than, say, a Wood Elf team. And uh, so they don't really have to rely on on passing all that much. But in a mirror match, anything can happen. Turn one now, back to the Masters of Mammal. Rolled a six on the ball pickup with Bazinga, the number four blitzer. Ball currently on that's kind of catchy's 16 yard line. Like he says, I'll be curious to see how aggressive he plays his defense. Me too. I personally, I think journeymen on an Elven team are much, much better on defense than they are on offense. On offense, you tend to want to carve away chunks of the pitch. That means you want to roll some dice uh, in key positions. Whereas on defense, you can screen them out or or just stay in front of them or whatever your 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 strategic plan is for the play. But it also means that those those journeymen are often really all they're doing turn to turn is just taking their dodge, taking their two plus dodge. Gets started with the two die blitz, gets a push against the answer to life 42. Moves the sorceress. Couple of space forward over in the left wide zone. Tila and the Sorceress working together to defeat Skeletor. Where are you, Skeletor? Where are you at, my man? To de defeat Skeletor and his minions. But apparently they've all they've all put their differences aside. When Blood Bowl, when Blood Bowl is the focus, they'll put their differences aside. Eternia, the conquest of Eternia can take a back seat. You've got a championship to win. Good two plus dodge here on defense. This is what we're talking about. Two deep in front of the offense currently. But if he has asked, does El Nugrino have anyone with guard? He does not. Three seconds to go. Will that be it? That'll be it. Shifts. Trap jaw one space over to the left. Gets him off the line. Turn two for that's kind of catchy. This right here, these two cameras, terrible camera placement. Why Why do you have two cameras this close to each other? Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ooh. 
almost 40 seconds here into turn two. That's kind of catchy. No action yet. Sweet Bunny trying to figure out uh, where this ball is going to go first before he starts taking actions um, to try to, to help get that ball where he wants it to be. Two die block to get things started will be a both standing result. It's actually called a both down, but if you have the block skill, you'll remain standing. And both players have the block skill, so they're both going to remain on their feet. Two die blitz again going after Skele Skeletor. Gets the pal this time. Needs a nine plus to break armor. Works out there. Even though Skelet uh, Skeletal <laughs> Skeletor is a blodger, uh, Giggity Giggity has tackle. Tackle negates the dodge skill, so the defender stumbles was result uh, would not apply in that case. B.1234 asks, is He-Man there too? Absolutely, He-Man's somewhere here. Where you at, buddy? There he is. He-Man, the number four blitzer over in the left wide zone. He has block, mighty blow, tackle, and dauntless. Four seconds of ball uh, to go. The ball's going to move forward to the four-yard line. It's going to have that ball caged up at the four-yard line. Turn two now for the Masters of Mammal. Masters of Mammal keeping their defense, uh, their defense intact here. You can see they have they've got a pretty solid line here. No gaps. Takes a mark on Remeyer, the number five journeyman. Life is asked, so does he just try to move in on the side of the cage or just defend? It's tricky. It's a tricky proposition in a, in a mirror match like this. It's the pal on that journeyman, doesn't break armor. Personally, I like the favor of keeping the defense intact and and forcing my opponent to roll the dice that he needs to roll and forcing him to make the mistakes. Of course, you gotta be wary of the wizard and the fact that nobody has spent any dice yet. You can get aggressive. If you, if you get aggressive on the ball, that could be very, very effective, but you've got to make sure you can hold that aggression for a turn. If there's any gaps in that aggression, the opponent could just run right by you, and now you're playing catch up. And in a mirror match, that means you're probably not going to catch them. Turn three for that's kind of catchy. El Numerino keeping the defense together, giving up no blocks to Sweet Bunny. He'll get just a blitz this turn. Are you going trick-or-treating tomorrow? Absolutely not. I'm turning off my lights, too. <laughs> I didn't buy any candy. Yeah, he, he meant Tuesday, though. Doug the Minister says, man, someone needs some tackle. <laughs> yes, indeed. I think he has one player with tackle, right? Let's see. Uh, I think actually two players with tackle? One, one player with tackle. <laughs> Ball's going to shift over to the right, closing down this cage with a little over a minute to play in turn number three.
type four point cage now on the ball carrier. Number five, Journeyman moves right back into position. Here comes that Blitz. Who's it going to be on? It's going to be on Stinkor. Two die Blitz. It's going to be a both standing result. Will he stay there or try to dodge away? If he dodges away, it's a two plus. Dodges away. Well done. Turn three back to the Masters of Mammal. Each team being, being very, very cautious here. Taking their blocks when they don't work out. They're not getting greedy. They're not overextending. These are two fairly fast teams. They don't, unlike a Dwarven team that really needs to move every single turn, they can take it easy for a few turns. They don't need to get rec uh, reckless. You especially don't want to get reckless with your more fragile players. In, uh, in the case of a Dark Elf team, a Witch Elf is AV7. You really don't want your, your Witch Elf to get knocked down and have your opponent just have to roll a, an 8 or higher to break armor. Masters of Mammal really, really want to stop the score here. Of course, when you're on defense, you always want to stop the score. But the Masters of Mammal absolutely want to try their hardest to stop the score here. And that is because of that wizard. If they can stop the score here, then they can go into the next half and focus on scoring and try to win this game. If they are down by a point, not only do they have to score just to tie the game, but they've got to be careful of that wizard. A lightning bolt could really put a crimp in their plans. Cleffy says, both teams have two people on the bench, so a few casualties doesn't hurt anyone too much. It hurts the casualties. <laughs> 20 seconds ago in turn number three here. El Nubrino going for the two die blitz. Gets the pal and the answer to life. Can he break armor? Our first armor break of the game, perhaps? Yes, indeed. Gets a stun out of it. Lots of movement left with Skeletor. So you can see El Nuberino trying, trying to whittle away to carve out this space here if Sweet Bunny will let him. Turn four for that's kind of catchy. Moves the sorceress back to safety. And it looks like Sweet Bunny is not going to let him close down the left wide zone. Takes a mark on Ram Man. Here comes the two die blitz. Gets a push out of this. Pushes, doesn't follow up. Is he going to move giggity giggity, though? He might be okay with the positioning of the Blitzer where he is. Indeed, it looks like he's going to shift this ball over to the left side of the pitch and move back a space. He's going to move back to the six yard line. There he is. You'll often see this sort of play with uh, some of the more fragile and faster teams. You see Skaven teams do this a lot as well. Uh, they'll just kind of shimmy back and forth, side to side, trying to open a hole that they can take advantage of. And so long as they're not, they'll just continue to move this ball laterally. By moving, that's a safe action, right? You don't have to roll any dice, but you are taking an action and therefore forcing your opponent to have to to respond in some way. And uh, so it can have sort of a, a nice benefit where you've taken a safe action. Now your opponent needs to respond. Will he screw up in his response? Will he roll a die that he doesn't need? Will he misclick perhaps? Will he make a, a, a tactical error? 
Final turn of the first quarter. Masters of Mammal back on defense. That defense still very strong, still intact. Both star players on the rear of the cage now. Looks like the Masters of Mammal are just going to continue to stay in front of this cage. That's what I would do. Does have to be a little careful of giving up the right wide zone here. Sweet Bunny does have players in a position to try to capitalize if uh, the Masters of Mammal retreat from the right side of the pitch. <laughs> Clevy says, I see dwarf teams do this all the time, too. <laughs> Clevy says, I feel like he's trying to get Mammal to blitz the cage. Perhaps so. Under a minute to play in the quarter. Al Nubarino repositioning his defense here. He's going to take a mark on the number nine journeyman. Is this going to be where he tries to blitz? Life is asked who's off to the far right for that's kind of catchy. Who's on first? Gets the pal on the number nine lineman. Can he break armor with a nine plus? He cannot. Or more than likely reposition He-Man here. Yes, indeed. He-Man's going to fall back into the linebacker position. Under 30 seconds now. Left in the first quarter. Ten seconds to go. You can bet El Nuberino is trying to decide what to do with those players over in the right wide zone. Will he... Will they stay put? Will he pull them in? He's going to stay put. He knows that Sweet Bunny could try to... Could try to carve out the right wide zone. He says, not on my watch. Turn five. Second quarter begins now. We've had just one armor break in this game. A mark taken on Ram Man in the left wide zone. It's going to be a blitz on that blodger coming up at some point. Almost certainly with Giggity Giggity, he does have the tackle skill that's going to negate dodge on Ram Man. <laughs> Boot Polish says, I forgot I'm in CST, not EST. <laughs> yeah, time zones. Time zones are the worst. Yeah, here comes that blitz with that tackle player. Only gets a push out of it, though. Both teams with a lot of rerolls here. We're in turn five. I'm surprised we haven't seen a, a reroll spent. Repositions that blitzer. Over in the left wide zone, he's behind the journeyman, Remeyer, the number five lineman. Like he says, given there's just one blitz per turn, I guess we shouldn't be surprised there aren't more injuries. Indeed. <laughs> Ducky Minotaur says, come on, stab someone. <laughs> Unfortunately, the assassin is in the reserve box for this drive. That's kind of catchy. Giving up on that right wide zone. Pulling in the offense to the left side of the pitch. Turn five now for the Masters of Mammal. Will they shift, shift to the left in kind? They still need to, they still need to be, uh, if not actively defending the right wide zone, they need to be in a position to defend it. Life is asked, is he hoping for a blitz and a lightning bolt to open a hole? Perhaps. Mirror matches are always tricky, right? It's always tricky. When you have a team and you know its strengths and weaknesses and you're up against a different team, 
that has different strengths and weaknesses, you know how to apply them, right? But when you're up against a mirror, you both have the same strengths, you both have the same weaknesses. <laughs> so it can be really tricky to kind of figure out what your turn-by-turn uh, -turn action should be. Witch Elf Blitz. Two die Blitz on the Journeyman. Gets the knockdown here. Breaks armor. Gets a KO. That's the first removal of the game. One man player advantage now for the Masters of Mammal. Good two plus dodge away by the Sorceress. Oh, he says, I think I actually had my first mirror match ever. This competition was halflings. <laughs> what a mirror. <laughs> what a mirror to have. <laughs> 45 seconds to go in turn number five. Zero, zero is the score in this rainy semifinal matchup. Aldo being very, very cautious with this defense. So far, it's paying off. The ball has yet to cross the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Poop Polish says, oh no, Rain. How did the elves ever pick up the ball? <laughs> Turn six for that's kind of catchy now. Three turns to try to score here in the first half. If they can't do it, then the Masters of Mammal will be on offense to start the second half of the game. That's kind of catchy. Still has a wizard on deck. Still has all three of their rerolls. Masters of Mammal leaving a reroll on the table. Yeah, rain plus AG2. That's that's rough. Blitz attempt on is it Stinkor? It is. Both standing results, unfortunately, and now has to dodge away to safety, and indeed she does. Two plus two plus may sound like it will always work. <laughs> that's that's not how odds work. <laughs> Eventually, you roll enough to ask any coach who's rolled a GFI. <laughs> you roll enough, you will fail it. And you'll fail it more than you think. Doug Mintar says, I wouldn't hate to be tied at the half with a wizard. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Me neither. Turn six now for the Masters of Mammal. They have conceivably four blocks here. They've got three potential blocks and a fourth on the Blitz. I think this is a ruse. I think the Masters of Mammal really don't want to overcommit to all of this. They'll definitely want to take a block or two maybe even three but boy boy oh boy they've still got to defend this pitch let's see what el nubrino decides to do here he could try to go after four players It's 11v10 on the pitch. Currently in the Masters of Mammal favor. Under a minute to go. Alvin Marino is uh, almost certainly keenly aware 
that sweet buddy needs to end next turn in squaring position it looks like he's going in aggressive here he's taking a mark on say hello to my little friend the number six lineman oh he's going in he's going in hard number six lineman with the wrestle skill that means on a both down resolve he can elect to use wrestle both players will get knocked in the down but there will be no armor roll and it will not be a turnover Tila giving up the right wide zone. She's back at middle linebacker now. 20 seconds to go in turn six. Blitz with the Sorceress. Two die Blitz gets a push on who's on first. Frenzy follow up for the Surf. He's got it. Well done. Surf's number eight gets a KO. We'll see if that'll stick. Two man player advantage now for the Masters of Mammal. We'll get the Sorceress off the line, or off the, the sideline, I should say. Going for the two die block on the answer to life. 42. Gets the knockdown to the block skill, gets a stun out of it. We'll see if he can capitalize on that. Five seconds left. It's going to take a block with Skeletor, two die block. Well done against Giggity Giggity. Doesn't break armor though. All right. Took three blocks there. Turn seven now for that's kind of catchy. This defense finally for the first time this game is in close quarters with the offense. We'll see how Sweet Bunny reacts to this. <clears throat> Clefie says stun is almost as good as a KO here. Yeah. Stun means you're out for a turn with so few turns left. It means uh, the likelihood that you're out for the rest of the drive is significantly increased. Two-dive blitz to get things started. Gets a pow on Stinkor with Hubris Rekarth, the star player. Breaks armor. Gets a KO. One man player advantage for the Masters of Mammal now. Moves the star player back, back to safety. <laughs> That's kind of catchy with uh, one reroll left on the table. Masters of Mammal have left two behind. Holy moly, he's moving, he's moving everybody backwards. <laughs> SBB, thank you for the bits. <laughs> Run. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's going in the wrong direction here. I'm not sure what Sweet Bunny has up his sleeve. Um, he's moving back to the 10 yard line. Dog the Minotaur might be right here. Sweet Bunny might be going for the... The, the big play to score, but the, the safer play. And if it doesn't work out, well, then it's tied at the half. He still has a wizard on deck. And uh, maybe he's hoping that'll give him the advantage in the second half of the game. <laughs> SB Beaver says, guess I should have specified the direction. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> I don't know what the Masters of Mam will do here. Maybe they just... Uh, run to safety maybe or maybe just go in for a blitz <laughs> Clive is thinking for the bits <laughs> I I mean I don't know I he could he could go for like a yellow block and just kind of run back but I just, I might just run away and just call it a half. Life East makes a good call. He's like, yeah, maybe they get a blitz and they bunch up to, to sort of go the fireball. If the fireball gets spent on a drive that doesn't really matter, um, then that would be great for the Masters of Mammal. Rolling double skulls on the blitz. Finally spends a reroll, gets a pal 
on Hubris Rackarth, the star player. Can he get a nine plus? He cannot. <laughs> Boot Polish says, just when I think I got this game figured out, coaches with way more skills do this. <laughs> and I'm confused. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur says, stack nine players, and hope for the fireball to fail. I have to imagine Sweet Bunny would not take the bait. Maybe he would, but I have to imagine he wouldn't. I don't know. You can make it more enticing by putting both witch elves in it. Twenty seconds left in turn number seven. Masters of Mammal are not going to run away. They're going to keep the pressure on. Turn eight for that's kind of catchy. Uh, they are not going to be able to score this half. We'll see what their plan is. They definitely want to try to stop the score. I don't think anybody from Masters of Mammal can score. It looks like they can't. Takes a mark on Fur Lane. Here comes the Blitz with the tackle player. So Dodge will not be in effect. Only gets a push. Oh, I'm real surprised he didn't reroll that. Eldril Sidewinder hasn't done anything all half, but uh, I think that's to be expected for this star player on defense. Moves the ball back to center pitch on the 10 yard line. He's going to try to keep this ball protected here in this final turn of the half. Hubris with the jump up. Jump up means that you don't have to spend 3MA to stand up. Boy, I, I don't know what the play is here. <laughs> Turn eight for the Masters of Mammal. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of catchy. He's not going to spend a single reroll in the half. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur says, Sidewinder does nothing but get injured. I'm surprised he's, he's still out there. <laughs> Two die blitz against Giggity Giggity. Spends a reroll here. It's going to be a both standing result. The Masters of Mammal spending their second reroll. All right. The only other decision he has to make here is, is he going to foul answer to life? I, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. He says, no, not going to do it. I haven't taken undue risks this half. I'm not going to take one now. 0-0 zero, zero at the half. The Masters of Mammal are going to be on offense. That's kind of catchy. Still hanging on to their wizard. Oh my goodness. And they're not going to get back their two knocked out players. I believe it's still going to be 11 v 11 on the pitch for this drive. Let's see. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Indeed it is. But now there's nobody left in the reserve box for that's kind of catchy. If those KOs don't come back and that's kind of catchy starts losing players, they're going to be down players. Three man line for that's kind of catchy. Giving up either wide zone. I think he's happy to do this. I, 
I think he wouldn't mind an early score. I think he also wouldn't mind an exposed ball carrier because he has the wizard. He has a bribe too, doesn't he? Yeah, he sells a bribe. I am so surprised. <laughs> Both KOs. Oh, he picked up an extra apothecary as well. He's got his Staff Apothecary and the Wandering Apothecary. All right, nobody in either wide zone for that's kind of catchy. Masters of Mammal, they'll be on offense for the first time this game. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. The weather could clear up on the kick. We'll see. Currently a five-man offensive line for the Masters of Mammal. They're going to try to block the line down. All three journeymen on the line. All three. I think there's a fourth, right? Yeah. There's a fourth in the KO box. Six players on the line now for the Masters of Mammal. They have a, a halfback... Seven, excuse me, no halfback. Seven players on the not line now. Looks like he's going to try to maximize his dice on the line and try to get a player advantage early. We'll see if that's going to work out for him. One player back to receive the kick. He does have sure hands, which will be very useful in the rain, provided it stays raining. Here's the kick. It's a high kick. Masters of Mammal will absolutely take this kickoff event in the rain we'll see if it works out good three plus catch turn nine for the masters of mammal they're not going to have to worry about rolling a die on their turn to take possession of the ball does he move the ball carrier first no he's going to take a block two die block on the right side of the line gets a knockdown on number 10 he's looking for a nine plus Brick's armor gets a stun. He got his nine plus. Gets a stun out of it. Two night block on the left side of the line. Gets a knockdown here as well against Fandmail. Fandmail. We'll probably pull an assist here to get a three die block on the number three. Oh, I'm sorry, on the number nine lineman in the center tackle position. Center defensive tackle. Nope. He's going to make it a two die block instead. Still got the pal regardless. Didn't break armor. Three blocks, three knockdowns. Broke armor on one and got a stun. Still has his blitz available. Looks like he's going to try to blitz down Answer to Life 42. He's the rookie lineman. He's the right outer, uh, the right outer linebacker. I suppose he's the left outer linebacker, really. Two die blitz with the pal skill that's what with the pal skill with the block skill and that's why you use the block skill two good stuns this turn really be able to capitalize on this most of his players not really in position to do so but their movements are going to be halved because they have to spend three ma to stand up on their follow-up turn nobody daring to take a gfi all game long seconds ago in this first half in this first turn of the half ball carrier is finally going to move forward moves to the eight yard line moves to the 
some players into position to try to get some protection on the ball carrier. Doesn't have to worry about the right wide zone here. Turn nine now for that's kind of catchy. They still have a wizard on deck. Very likely it's not going to use it on this turn, but El Nubarino really does have to be careful of that wizard. Catchy taking a mark on Ferlane, the number 12 lineman. Two die blitz. It's gonna get the knockdown thanks to tackle here, and he broke armor. Got a KO. One man player advantage now for that's kind of catchy. Dark elves in the Christmas colors. Has a little cross of secondary players here. Life is a very different defense than Mammal had. Yes, indeed. Masters of Mammal electing to screen out the pitch. That's kind of catchy. Giving up those wide zones. Good two plus dodge by the number nine lineman. seconds ago in turn number nine for that's kind of catchy they've spent their blitz shift the number two player that's what she said back one space he's the player with mighty blow picked up a second mighty blow player with uh, hubris over here Two and ten for the Masters of Mammal now. I wonder if part of this is both coaches are like, you know what? If I do win, I might have to go up against dwarves. <laughs> That's true. I did say might. I did say might. <laughs> but the stakes, the stakes for, for winning the whole season are much higher than the stakes for winning third place. Like he might be trying to set up the blitz on Bazinga, the number four blitzer. Being a blitzer, he has the block skill. Here it comes. Two die block. I'm sorry, three die block. He's got Ram in, in there for the assist. Got the pal. Can't get the nine plus, though. That's very true. That championship shirt is nothing to sneeze at. They are lovely. When you take a block of the game, you compare your strength to your opponent's strength. In this case, four to three. If the strength is equal, you roll one die on the block. If uh, the strength is different, you roll two dice. And if one strength is greater than double the strength of the other, you roll three dice. In this case, he had four to three, but he had three assists. So that's four, five, six, seven to three is more than double three. And therefore, he rolled three dice on the block. Uh. 
<laughs> Brett's could win. I've seen someone make two GFIs before. <laughs> And for the first time this ball game, we see the ball cross the line of scrimmage. The Masters of Memel are going to cross over to the opposing four-yard line over in the right wide zone. Turn 10 now for that's kind of catchy. Al Liberiano deciding to move that ball over into the right wide zone. Two very, very cautious coaches in this game. Not just in their play, but also, or not just in their, their positioning and which blocks they want to take, but also in their in their use of rerolls. Each coach really hoping for a, a good die roll to open something up or hoping the opposing coach makes a mistake or has a bad die roll. He says, I think he scores at his earliest opportunity. He's already proven he can defend. Um, boy, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe so. I I think normally as elves, I'd want to do that. And I think in the second half, regardless of the fact that it's a mirror match, I'd probably want to do that as well. Um, I just, I don't really know how the wizard fits into that. Like, I, I'd be really scared of that wizard. <laughs> To die block on on old He-Man. He's gonna get the knockdown here. He-Man doesn't have dodge. Not a very nimble player. Doesn't break armor. Can't break armor on somebody who doesn't wear armor. Two seconds to go in turn 10. That's kind of catchy. Setting up their defense. The stop forward progress over in the right wide zone. He'll still need to defend against mid pitch as well. I think He Man wears exactly as much armor as a Norse player. <laughs> Going for the foul. He does have a bribe. Gets an injury on He-Man, but he's gonna get called off. The bribe might save him here. Wow, what a huge injury. We'll see if the ref accepts the bribe. He does indeed. What a critical foul. Well done by Sweet Bunny. Took He-Man out of the game. Wow. Not only did he take He-Man out of the game, but with that injury, He-Man's season is... Oh, no. The oppo saved He-Man. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right, He-Man. I guess you have the power after all. <laughs> but that is an oppo spent. Tudai Block gets a push here. One more resource taken away from the Masters of Mammal. Rick's armor again here. Gets a stun out of it.
Duck Mimtar asks, is that a two-man player advantage? Indeed it is. It's 11v9 on the pitch. Two-man player advantage for that's kind of catchy. Taking a two-die block with the Sorceress. Gets the knockdown on number 10. Has to follow up due to Frenzy. See if El Nugarino resets his offense. I think he has to. Maybe moves this ball back to mid-pitch. Fifteen seconds here. Al Nubarino trying to decide where he wants this ball to be. Looks like he's going to take take a blitz on the number nine journeyman. Here it is. Two die frenzy blitz. Gets a push. Gets a frenzy follow up here for two dice. Gets another push out of this. Oh boy. With one second to go, where's this ball carrier going to end up? Wow, gets it in right under the gun. And indeed, he moves the ball back to mid-pitch. Holy moly. Turn 11 now for that's kind of catchy. We'll see what Sweet Bunny decides to do here. I imagine he'll repossession the defense a little bit, but the question's going to be is, is he going to go after this ball? <laughs> Doug the Minotaur says, whew. <laughs> Two seconds on the clock. You still got to get through your previous action. <laughs> and then you get your final action in under the gun. So indeed, he's going to reposition his defense here a little bit. Ha. Shuffling players around. I don't think he wants to go after this ball. But we'll see. <clears throat> 20 seconds to play in turn number 11. That's kind of catchy. Still holding on to three rerolls. They had to burn through their bribe on the He-Man foul. Which worked out wonderfully for them, but then the Apothecary saved him. He is going to go for the Blitz! Here, one die Blitz! He got the pal! <laughs> Broke Armor got a great stun on that as well! Is he going to try to dodge toward this ball? He says, no, I've taken, I've taken enough risks, thank you very much. Oh my goodness gracious. Went for the one died journeyman blitz. Got the pow out of it and broke armor to boot. Got a stun on Argville. Well done. Clavy says, well, the ball is loose. Now what? I think, I think the Masters of Mammal. Well, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I would say they want to pull back and defend the ball in case the, the pickup doesn't work because they don't have their sure hands player. Uh, and they've got a couple of players, uh, a couple of defenders that 
are really in, in spots that you don't want them to be. So I would wager he'd want to pull players back to defend this ball before going for the pickup. But if he doesn't and he risks it and it works out, maybe he he moves this ball down pitch. Takes a mark on the number nine journeyman, that player that took the block. He is going to move Teal of the Witch Elf way down pitch down the left wide zone, all the way back to his own 18 yard line. I'm sorry, not his 18 yard line, his opponent's 18 yard line. Takes a two die block. He's gonna get the knockdown on number 10, breaks armor. Gets a stun. Threatening the pass with Tila. Wow, he really, he really threw her out there. Relying on, uh, relying on her blood sidestep, I suppose. Two die blitz on the number nine journeyman gets the knockdown. Well done. If you get a both down result and uh, you stay standing to do the block skill, you don't actually push the opposing player. In fact, anybody who gets knocked down on a both down result doesn't get pushed. Looks like he might be trying to move this ball. Move this ball to the left. We'll see. Good three plus pickup with the sorceress. And indeed, he moves this ball on the opposing two-yard line now, moved it over to the left. All right, this offense is going to try to protect the ball carrier. Final turn of the third quarter, 0-0 zero, zero is the score. He's going to mark Tila. How dare you, Tila? <laughs> Dr. Minotaur says this is this is Eldril's one chance to shine. <laughs> if we're going to see the blitz on Tila, he'll need the pow. GG Larry, welcome to the stream. He says no fireball. Yeah, it seems it seems he's still holding on to this this wizard. Eldra is going to take a mark on trap jaw. He's going to hypno trap jaw, and that works out. So you can see here a Hypno. So basically the way Hypno works is uh, once that player is hypnotized, he loses, he basically can't do anything. He loses his tackle zones and he can't do anything until he's activated. You may be asking yourself, well, what's the big deal? If he just can activate, then what's the problem? Well, the, the problem is that Hypno is going to sort of change action order for the Masters of Mammal. For example, Trapjaw's not gonna not gonna lend the assist anymore. There's no tackle zones now. So uh, that's kind of catchy, can can move in. The holes can open up where they weren't previously. All right. Are you not entertained? The number what number is she? What number are you? Uh oh. The Witch Elf will say. <laughs> I can't tell what number she is. <laughs> it looks like six. Going in on the Blitz rolls double skulls. That's going to be a turnover. I think the one die there with Wrestle was worth worth it, but uh, didn't work out. Went in for the one die Blitz. Oh, I'm sorry, he rolled, he rolled push into Skull. <laughs> really wanted the knockdown there. Fourth quarter begins with the Masters of Mammal. Scores currently 0-0. Zero to zero. So 
So with the Witch Elf and Bazinga the Blitzer marking Tila on either side, that means her dodges are no longer positive. There are three plus dodge. And in fact, it's not just one dodge anymore, it's two dodges. So to get away from both these players, it'll be a three plus dodge to a two plus dodge. The Masters of Mammal, this stoic line ahead of them. They're going to move Skeletor down pitch. Skeletor in the right wide zone on the 12 yard line. Blitz on. Answer to life 42. Gets the pal here. Can he get a 9 plus? He cannot. Forty-five seconds left to go in the turn. Where are the Master of Mammal going to leave this ball? They're going to move this ball to the opposing ten-yard line over in the right wide zone. Oh boy! Oh boy! We might see Ram Man move up to the twelve-yard line, or move, yeah, move up to the twelve-yard line. Maybe Duncan moves behind. Yes, indeed. Oh, he's going to move even further to the 16-yard line. Doesn't move Duncan behind, moves Duncan laterally. Activates Trapjaw now, gets the two-die block on Eldril, gets the POW, eight plus to break armor this time. Doesn't break armor. He's going to try the dodge with Tila. Three plus to a two plus. Works out. Well done. Tila moves toward the ball carrier. Her fellow witch elf. Turn 13. Back to that's kind of catchy. Tie game. That's kind of catchy. Still has a wizard on deck. Oh, I heard the lightning and I was like, is he, is he casting lightning bolt? He can't be, right? <laughs> he is. There it is. There's the lightning bolt. So he's knocked down the ball carrier. The ball's going to scatter back to the eight yard line. He's going to try to go in on this ball on this turn. So that's the wizard spent. You have two options with the wizard. You can either cast a fireball, which is a Three by three square and every single player in that square in that grid uh, has to roll uh, a f uh, has to roll a D6 on a four plus. They'll get knocked down and go through the armor break uh, rules. A lightning bolt affects just one space, but it's a two plus instead of a four plus. Hypnotizes Duncan, the number nine blitzer. So that means he's, does, is he going to try to dodge with hubris? Goes here, goes here to a two plus dodge here. Is that the plan? Taking a blitz on whiplash, gets a push. says maybe go around and not dodge that'll yeah that'll only work if he moves this player out of the way which he did so it's one two three four five six seven one more space of movement not gonna pick the ball up he's gonna mark skeletor instead oh boy oh boy trying to get some protection on this ball not picking it up this turn He is going to pick it up. He's going to pick it up with Giggity Giggity. This is the Blitzer. And GFI's away. Ha! Oh, why? Why not Hubris? You know what? 
I'm not in the semifinals. <laughs> Who am I to talk? All right. Some decent protection on the ball here. We'll see if it'll last. GFI to Witch Elf. Oh, no. Gonna spin the reroll here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Spins, spends one of his two oppos here to keep the Witch Elf on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, SP Beaver with the emergency GFI warning. A little too late there. Thank you for the bits. Tried to GFI. GFI fails on a one. You have to roll a D6, fails on a one. Spent the reroll, failed again. One out of six, as everybody knows, means a 900% chance of failure. <laughs> if you're new to Blood Bowl, it's a 1-6 chance, but... 900%! <laughs> it says, it happens to me all the time. I go run in the grass, and then I wake up in the hospital. <laughs> Masters of Mammal. Jump up dodge. To take a mark on the ball carrier. The sorceress. One of uh, three Witch Elves left on the pitch here. Two for the Masters of Mammal. Here comes the two die Blitz. Gets a push up Giggy Giggity. Is he going to re-roll this? Spends the re-roll. He'll get the knockdown. I think that was a good call. Masters of Mammal down to two re-rolls for the game. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that have been something if... If the journeyman picked the ball up. The ball's gonna scatter two spaces, crosses the line, and scrimmage is now on the Masters of Mammal Masters of Mammal's own two yard line. Blitz has been spent though, so if that's a, if that's gonna be a recovery, it's gonna be a minus one. Really it's gonna be a minus two. It's a minus one plus the rain. Good two plus dodge. Takes a mark on the ball with Whiplash. Another good use of Hypno is forcing your opponent to have to take an action with that player. Fail dodge! Oh boy! Fail dodge gets a stun on Argfil. Oh, no. Eventually, you're gonna, you're gonna fail a dodge. He didn't have the reroll to spend. In this version of the rules, you can only use one reroll a turn. Or one team reroll, I should say, a turn. He spent it already on the Blitz. Couldn't reroll that failed dodge, and Arkville's gonna be stunned. That's a huge stun. Not only is a stun, but this is what I was uh, about to mention here with the uh, the hypnotized player. By by hypnotizing a player, um, it kind of forces your opponent to have to do something with him. Maybe he just wanted that player to stand there and exert tackle zones. Well, he's not going to do that until he gets activated. Two marks on the ball. Blitz on Whiplash coming up. Two die Blitz. Both standing under a push result, or does he spend his final reroll? He's thinking about it. He's going to go ahead and take the push. I imagine this means the number seven lineman comes on the ball. Let's see. Hubris can go uh, uh, one, two, no. One, two, four, five, six, seven. Ugh, 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 ugh. If Sweet Bunny can recover and hold this ball for a turn, they'll be in real good shape. They'll have the ball, they'll have it secured, 
They'll be on offense, and the defense will more than likely be behind the ball. Eldrill Sidewinder gets in to take another mark on the ball. Three plus pickup fails. Is he going to spend his final reroll of the game? He is. Good pickup by the number seven lineman. Well done. That's got to get you with no rerolls left for the game. Can the Masters of Mammal? capitalize on this they've lost control of the ball the ball is on their own two yard line now with most of the opponents uh defense turned offense by the ball carrier i think hubris is gonna have to dodge into position he's gonna have to make was that one oh he's gonna have to make uh, a couple a couple of dodges I don't know, maybe he stays put, keeps Skeletor at bay? I'm not sure. Hey, he made the two dodges. Well done. Masters of Mammal. How do they get in on this ball? They do have Duncan. Duncan has leap and strip ball. He's going up against a rookie lineman. No skills, he has the block skill himself. All he would need is a push. Anything but a skull would knock the ball out of number seven's hands. Two die block on Giggity Giggity gets the knockdown. But then once he takes this, uh, which I think is an inevitable blitz, he's got to have a plan to recover the ball. If he can get lucky, maybe this ball uh, chains and scatters out of the cage, out of this protection to a place where he can recover. It's a one die block currently. Can't really do any better. Here it comes. One die block. Well, one die blitz gets a push. It's going to strip the ball out of the hands of the ball carrier. Where is it going to scatter, though? Does he follow up is the question. He does not. right into the hands of Eldril Sidewinder with his nerves of steel. Fifty fifty catch worked out. I think the Masters of Mammal have some dodging, some dodging to do. Takes a mark with the Sorceress on the ball carrier. Takes a one die block instead, gets the pow on Merman. So no dodging with Trapjaw. Where's Trapjaw gonna end up? Yeah, he's gotta move him down pitch. Keep him in this game. Takes a mark on the second star player, Hubris Rakarth. Turn 15 for that's kinda catchy. Two turns left in this game. That's kind of catchy. Started this half on defense. They've recovered the ball. Can they score? If this if this half ends in a draw, because this is a playoff game, we'll be going to overtime. And the important thing to remember with overtime is that you do not get your rerolls back. However many rerolls you have is what you go into overtime with. That means that's kind of catchy. Has no rerolls left for overtime unless the kickoff event table favors them, but remember, El Nuberino has the plus one fame advantage. Ha! 
Takes a mark on Duncan. Gets both players to cover Teal of the Witch Elf. Boy, both standing results on the stand-up blitz. Oof. Oof. Two die block gets a push on Whiplash. It's a dodge with Eldril to start running down pitch. There he goes. Good two plus dodge. Runs Eldril down pitch to the opposing 16 yard line. I have no idea why my camera is like locked. This is very strange. That's why. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Two die block on trap jaw will be a dodge push. Boy, and it is looking grim for the masters of mammal. Failed dodge by number 11. He's going to be KO the journeyman removed from the pitch. Masters of Mammal have to go after this ball. But with whom is the question? They still have a reroll. Their final turn of this game if they don't stop this score. Doug Minotaur says, I hate playing against Dark Elves with inducements. <laughs> Two die block. Gets a push. Looks like maybe he's going to get Duncan into the fray. After a very, very conservative game, that's kind of catchy. He spent the wizard on a lightning bolt. Just at the right time, recovered the ball, and now, unless Eldril Sidewinder can be stopped, they will win this ball game and they will advance to the Blood Bowl Championship match. Like Mentor says, step one, punch Eldril. <laughs> I read that. I read that as step, then one punch Eldril. <laughs> <laughs> Good dodge by Duncan on the blitz. Oh, he tried to leap in. He's got to spend the reroll here. Doesn't land on his feet. That's going to be a turnover. And that's kind of catchy. It's going to win this game one to zero. And they are going to advance to the finals. Very well played game. Wow. There it is. Well played and well done by Sweet Buddy. Guaranteed. Guaranteed to end this season in at least second place, but of course he's going to be playing for the championship. Very well done. One to zero with that score. Giggity, giggity, going to be the MVP for That's Kind of Catchy. The Masters of Mammal with Ram Man, their MVP. Uh, neither player going to level up. Neither team is, a lim is out of the season. They both have one more game. That's Kind of Catchy. He's going to have the finals to play. The Masters of Mammal are going to have the consolation match for third place. The The Blood Bowl is the is the only competition where, you know, we, we actually rank everybody, you know, by individual ranking. So there's a consolation match. 
That's kind of catchy, dominating ball possession this game. They were in offense and held onto that ball for the entire first half of the game. Uh, then in the second half on defense, they were able to st make strategic use of that wizard to recover the ball, hold on to it, to score in turn 16. Really well done. SPP for the match, not a whole lot. Again, a very conservative match. The Masters Mammal picked up no MVP, ex uh, I'm sorry, no SPP except for their MVP. That's kind of catchy. Picked up three on Eldril, which doesn't matter because Eldril's a star player. So five each side. Boy, what a game that was. The next game in Blood Bowl number three is going to be tomorrow night, Monday, October 30th at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It's UTC minus five. That's going to be the Dinner Bell Darlings versus the Knights of Nuffle. Doug the Minotaur's Dwarven team, nigh unstoppable Dwarven team versus Cliophius's Brett team. Cliophius, of course, the reigning league champion looking to defend his title here in his semifinal matchup. Oh man, my, I should have my mic on when I'm talking. Huh? <laughs> so that'll be the uh, our second semifinal match. That, and uh, after that, we'll have the consolation match. We'll have the finals. So three more games left this season. It's been an absolutely fantastic season. All five coaches that have made it this far have been uh, really, I mean, honestly, I don't think anybody lucked into the, into the Blood Bowl. I think all five of these coaches really earned it and have played absolutely fantastically all season long. Five great coaches. I'm excited to see uh, how they rank it and how they stack up as we continue to play this competition. Um, after that semifinal match uh, is played tomorrow night, then uh, scheduling for the consolation match will begin. And when that game gets scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to that schedule on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, in your favorite podcast app, and you can also watch previous games on our YouTube channel, Play Blood Bowl, man. This game is so much fun. This game is so much fun. You have so much agency, um, and the dice, when you're, when you're new to the game, the dice makes it feel very much like a luck-driven game, but it's not, right? Again, all of these coaches have have been fantastic coaches. They have consistently been winning again and again and again. Doug the Minotaur, I think, has lost three games all season. Clyphus won the entire competition. He, he's the league champion, and he's back again this season in, in the Blood Bowl in the semifinals. Uh, good coaches can consistently win, and, and the dice just mix things up enough where, uh, you know, if thing, you, you can't, it's not like chess, you can't just predict what your optimal thing is. Uh, optimal moves going to be the dice uh, require you to think uh, two or three steps ahead just in case the dice don't work out your way. It's such a fun, fun game. You can play this game via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Until tomorrow night at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs>